Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for another Fear of Size. I've got a little bit of rant and some life updates for you. First up, the brand Morphe is not cruelty free. Now, in 2015, I reached out to Morphe and I asked them if they were cruelty free, if they were selling in China, etc. And they said, no, they're cruelty free. They have some vegan brushes and they were really pleasant with their, their reply. So I assume this to be true. Now, I'm guessing something changed since 2015 because recently when a cruelty-free blogger that I trust emailed them to ask like the big list of questions that we ask, the responses she received were that Morphe didn't want to answer the questions. They didn't want to talk about whether or not they were selling in China. They didn't want to talk about the ingredients or anything like that. So because they refused to answer the questions, I put them into the no longer cruelty-free category. I don't trust them and I just, I'm so angry that I, you know, I didn't buy anything from them in 2015 and I didn't buy anything from them in 2016 until the end of the year when I bought the Kathleen Lights palette and the Little Mama Drama Pat palette. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm really frustrated with that, but I thought I would update you because I know that I have said for years that Morphe was cruelty free because that's what they told me and nope, they lied. Not cruelty free. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the Sephora website update. Oh my God, what a piece of crap. The website update is not user friendly. It is terrible to try and navigate. The brand page A to Z no longer exists. So you can't actually see the complete list of brands that are offered at Sephora. You just have to know a brand off the top of your head to see if you actually can look at their products. When I try to search for items on the site, I'm constantly getting 404 errors, meaning that it's just saying it doesn't exist when I know it does. So I just feel like the site redesign is poorly implemented it was not it is not user friendly because it doesn't really let you see all of the brands available all it does is push the really high end expensive brands like Lemur who isn't cruelty free <laughs> I guess I should just expect that Sephora is going to disappoint me. I'm I'm a VIB Rouge and I feel like I have really no benefits for that. So yeah, I don't like the website changes. What do you think about them? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Next, I did a massive update to my cruelty-free brands list on my blog. I added a ton of Leaping Bunny approved brands to my list. I also added Lime Crime and Jeffree Star to my list. I had been getting a ton of emails from people who were confused because both of those brands, which are beauty brands, are cruelty free and Leaping Bunny certified and they wanted to know why they weren't on my list. Now to me, both of the owners are problematic. Lime Crime has been problematic for almost as long as I've been blogging between selling repackaged minerals, um, harassing bloggers, stealing blogger images, threatening to sue bloggers, harassing Temptalia, their website data breach, the rust issue that came up with stuff, having ingredients that were not correctly marked on their products. So they had some stuff that was supposed to be vegan, but it wasn't actually vegan because it contained beeswax, um, all kinds of stuff like that. They even had a problem with the FDA over their labeling. Because of that, I personally feel like they're problematic, but they're on the list so that it cuts down to confusion. Jeffree Star himself is problematic because I guess he's been a misogynist and he's been racist. And again, those are things that I don't agree with. So. Yeah, anyway, I added them both back. I really wish both of the owners of those companies would apologize for their past transgressions and then let people move past them and then don't do anything else stupid in the future. That would be great. I, you know, you would think that they would have the money to hire PR people to help manage them so that they don't keep making these you know, blunders over and over again. On that note, I've recently had some friends tell me that they've had to swallow their distaste for the company owners because they ended up having to buy their products because their products were the only products that didn't trigger their allergies, which really sucks to think about. And on a related tangent, I've had a ton of people ask me to review the Androgyny palette and I personally was not comfortable with buying it. I was talking about, about it with my husband and explaining to him why I didn't want to buy it and why I thought the company owner was problematic. So my husband ended up buying me the palette. So I may or may not review it. If I review it, what I will do is a live swatching like I did, or, um, I believe I did that with the first palette, the Beauty Killer, which I did buy and I did like. Next, I finally upgraded my cell phone. This is the Google Pixel XL. Yes, it is ginormous. It is bigger than my old phone, the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. And so far I love it. Google makes everything so easy. So with this phone, when I went to set it up, what was awesome about it was that basically you, know, you log in, it asks for your information for your Gmail account. And then it says, do you just want to get all of your information from the cloud? And I'm like, yes, yes, let's do that. 
So I chose that option and it was able to basically pull in all of my saved passwords and then it gave me the option of looking through all of my apps and deciding which apps I wanted to keep. So I was able to take my phone, my old phone, which had like 44 apps and like half of them were crap from T-Mobile that T-Mobile forces you to have on your phone. And I was able to get my new phone down to like 21 apps. So I was thrilled about that, that I got to get rid of basically like 20 some apps of bloatware that T-Mobile forces on you. So really excited by that. So far, I really love the functionality. I haven't done any like Facebook live videos on this and I've only taken a few pictures, but the picture that I've taken, the, the pictures that I've taken so far looked really good. I did do an Instagram story on here, which looked pretty nice. So yeah, I just got this yesterday and I'm thrilled because I desperately needed to get a new phone. My Samsung Galaxy Note 4 had basically gotten to the point where it was just randomly restarting over and over and over again. And when it got stuck in a cycle like that, I had to pop the battery out, leave it out for an hour, put it back in. Sometimes that still wouldn't fix it. So then I had to try um, t taking the battery out, putting the battery back in, plugging it in, and then trying to get it to start properly. Once it started properly, it would be okay for a day or two, but then it would go back to the cycle and I'd have to figure out like how to get it out of that cycle. I did a factory reset and it just, I don't know, it was not working. There was an update that came through to it, I think like a month ago, and that's it. that update seemed to break it. And that was one of those updates that T-Mobile forces you to do, so I, I don't know, but I was very, very glad that my new phone finally got here. Many of you have asked for an update on Max. So I took Max back to the vet and I had a bunch of questions and I took some of the suggestions that you guys had and here's the results of it. So first up, Max is almost 16. I'd been saying he was 14 forever, but apparently he's closer to 16 than he is to uh, 15. So I'm like, okay, he's older than I thought. Um, but Dave kept telling me, no, he's 14 because I think he was born here. And I was like, all right, your dog, you should know. The next thing is, is that he has an elongated soft palate and an elongated soft palate is something that can cause breathing problems. He does have collapsing trachea, although when they had checked for this like last year, he didn't have it. So I don't really, I didn't, I haven't read up on it yet. So I don't really know exactly what causes that. But the vet did say that him being overweight was not helping that issue. And the collapsing trachea does cause him to have breathing issues. He most likely does have congestive heart failure, which can cause breathing issues because it has like a, you'll, you'll end up with a buildup of fluid on the lungs. He's overweight, which obviously causes a lot of breathing issues. He's got allergies, which causes breathing issues. So the vet wants us to try and get him to lose weight. So we're working on that. But I gotta tell you, sometimes Max is difficult when it comes to that because he is all about food. If you've ever been around a pug, they get super excited with food. And so I, I'm feeding him the amount of food that the vet says to feed him in the morning and at night. But the problem is when I put down food for Phaedra, if Phaedra doesn't eat it right away, because Phaedra in general does not give a fuck about food. She's like, whatever, she prefers to free feed. So that's what I used to do until we got Max as I would free feed her. So I kind of like try to coax her to eat in the morning when I put her food down. But a lot of times she'll just be like, no, not interested, not gonna do it. So like today, <laughs> I sometimes make the mistake of like, if I have to go run an errand or go to an appointment, I'll put, I'll put down food for both the dogs. Max will eat his food in three seconds, but Phaedra will look at her food, maybe take a bite and then walk away. Well, if I don't remember when I leave to pick up Phaedra's food dish and put it on the counter in the kitchen so that Max can't eat it, he will climb up into her food dish because I have an elevated food dish for Phaedra because she's a big dog and he will eat all of her food. So when I came home from my appointment today, I was like, oh great, I left her food down and you ate the whole damn bowl. So he got like six meals, you know, in between like his uh, breakfast and dinner. So not good. So they put him on a different antibiotic, which I think is gonna help clear up some of the problem with, I guess, his breathing. And then we're also putting him on a daily uh, allergy pill that he has to take. <laughs> and we're also putting him on a daily allergy pill that he has to take twice a day. So hopefully that'll help too. Okay, this weekend I'm gonna be at the makeup show Orlando. If you are in Orlando and you're gonna be at the makeup show, say hi to me, I have pink hair, I'm pretty easy to spot, I'll be there both days. I'm really looking forward to listening to James Vincent speak and I believe Jordan Liberty is gonna be there talking as well. So it should be a really great event. Last thing I wanna talk, talk about is Facebook. As you know, I have the Fear Nix Facebook group and in the Facebook group, we talk about makeup, we talk people in and out of purchases, we do weekly makeup challenges. In fact, I recently did the cheap makeup challenge and I will put a link to that video so you can check it out. I did a full face for under $30 with full-size products. 
I'm also a member of the Poison Purpose Poise Chat group, and in both groups, I'm trying to do at least one Facebook Live video a week. So I, what that means is I go in there and I talk with people real time while I'm either doing a tutorial or I'm talking about something. I've talked about cruelty-free beauty. I've talked about getting lash extensions like I have. And I think I'll be talking about microblading soon too. So it's just, you know, it's a way to come in and interact and hang out and have fun. So you should definitely look into joining both groups. Anyway, that's what's going on with me. What's going on with you? Please be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and found it informative, please give it a thumbs up and share. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. Thanks so much for watching.